All right. So we're going to pray, and we're going to get rid of some things, and then I'm going to release the angels. There is a ton of angels in this place. They're waiting to work some miracles. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First, we want to prepare the road. Look, we have to get rid of everything that's in the way of the miracle. So right now, I want you to seriously search your heart. If you are upset at anyone, if you've been talking about anyone, if you have unforgiveness in your heart for anyone, you have to get rid of it right now. Otherwise, that is not going to allow the miracle to manifest in your life. And I don't know why, but I'm hearing the word stingy, stingy, stingy. I don't know why, but uh, if you're stingy, you need to repent because you need a miracle, amen? So let's do that first. That's what we're going to do first, all right? So bow your head. Father, we're going to get this out of the way right now. It says, prepare the way for the Lord. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Lord, we release repentance if we are offended at anyone. Offense creates fences to block the power of the Lord from coming in. So if we're offended at anyone, we are going to, right now, repent for our words, for our thoughts, and we're going to release forgiveness for anyone that's hurt us. So say it now in your heart. Let me hear you stir up your, your spiritual gifts. Let me hear you praying to the Lord. Come on. Forgive those people and repent for being angry at them. I don't care what they did to you. This is about you getting a miracle. Who cares what they did to you? Let it go. You're only drinking all your own poison. Right now, put the blood on it. Right now, everybody start putting the blood on it. Come on, stir yourself up. Put the blood on it right now. We're going to clear the way for the rest of the weekend. Miracle signs and wonders. Because the power of the cross being released right now in this place. The power of the cross right now being released in this place. The blood of Jesus being released in this place right now. Have Holy Spirit remind you of anyone you need to forgive. But you'll know, you'll know that person, whenever you think of them, you go, ah. Get rid of that, ah, feeling right now. Somebody, you're going to be healed of a tissue disease, a tissue disease. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it looks like, and I don't know who it is. But you're going to be healed of a tissue disease, something in your tissues has disease or disorder in it, you're being healed. When you feel that you've forgiven and you've released, raise your hand. Okay, we're almost there. We're going to give one more minute. Everybody start praying in tongues for the people that are still in the process. Let it all go to this morning. This is where you lay it down at the altar. And you never look back. You never talk about that person again. You never get upset at them again. You let it go. This is your moment for a miracle. Now let's give a big shout to the Lord. Come on, give a big shout. Not a little shout. Yes, God, you're awesome. You are awesome, Jesus. You are amazing. Thank you for your cross. Thank you for the power of your blood. Thank you for who you are. We give you the honor and the glory right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Now, 
Now we're going to activate the angels that are in the room. How do you activate the angels that are in the room? Well, see, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to tell you what they do. Remember the guy, the Larry and the Larry, the two Larrys, the Larry with the neck and the Larry with the back, right? What that happened that day is right before those miracles took place, I was standing on stage, that was a Kansas prison, and I saw the heavens open up and angels coming down carrying platters with body parts on them. People had talked about that before. I'd heard it before. People had said that stuff to me before, but you know what? You don't really believe it until you see it. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. I'd hear people say it. I was like, oh, that must be nice. Well, I saw it, <laughs> and now I have faith for it, amen, because now I see it a lot. I see it all the time. In fact, it, that one, two of those platters was one was a neck for Larry, okay? My two uh, volunteer friends that were there were standing behind him when I was talking to him on stage, and they said the back of his shirt was doing this while I was praying for him. It was flapping. Why? Because an angel was behind there putting in a new neck. <laughs> Amen? And then they put that new spine into the other Larry's back. Remember, now both those guys got tested by a sergeant with a metal detector. And you know what happened? The, all the guys in that crowd, they flipped out. They were like, whoa. Some of them were like, yes. Later on, like, there were guys that came up on stage and were dancing on stage. Men don't dance on stage in prison. <laughs> they don't. All right? But that's what happens when real revival hits. Nobody cares. I remember one guy came in to hackle me after that happened in the next session. I don't believe it. Do it again. I said, I didn't do it in the first place. I said, but watch God. I'll do it again. And he came in to heckle me, so I started bringing up witnesses. I said, who knew these guys before that when this first happened? Who knew these guys? And everybody raised their hand. I said, come up here and testify. One guy ran up. He was the Larry with the neck. He used to be his roommate. And I said, he goes, I used to be Larry's roommate. And I said, yeah. He said, yep. And I know he has metal, had metal in his neck. I said, how do you know? He says, because when his neck used to hurt him, I used to massage his neck. <laughs> and I'm there going, oh, that's great. Awesome. <laughs> like, people don't say that. Men will never say that in prison. Okay? Revival must have hit because he didn't care. I said, now reach up there right now and touch his neck and see. Could you feel the metal? He says, yes, I could feel the metal. I said, now reach up there right now and touch his neck and see if you still feel it. He goes, I don't have to. I said, why not? And he says, because as soon as he got the miracle, I ran up to him. As soon as he came off stage and felt his neck, and there ain't no metal in there. So now all these guys, after, right after it happened, they all went to Chow, right? Well, in that facility, there's a, there's a metal detector in Chow. You got to go through it so nobody gets shanked while they're eating, okay? So they all followed them because they know that these two guys set off the metal detector every single time. Well, guess what happened that day? <laughs> no metal. <laughs> Angels did that, though. They took the metal out, and they put the new body part in. How does that happen? They, become, they come in the spirit. Everything is actually vibrating a frequency where it's a light wave. So metal can come out like a light wave, and then the spirit body part goes in like a light wave, and then it becomes solid. That's how it happens. Okay, amen? But angels are here today to do the same thing. Amen? And we want to activate into the angelic realm. There's actually been angels that have been here, been here in this building that I haven't worked with before <laughs> that have been waiting a long time to do something amazing for you. And it's happening today. So how do we work with them? Angels, one, hearken to the voice of his word. Psalm 103. So even as we're preaching, as we're talking, as you're decreeing, I'm healed right now in the name of Jesus. By his stripes I am healed. Right? By his stripes I am healed. He's healing me of all the diseases of, of Egypt, right? Even as you're saying these things, as, you, as you've been decreeing the word, as you, you're, you're having the angels hearken to it, amen? How else do you, how else? You worship. What have we been doing? Worshiping, 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 right? That's why it's so important to have such a great, amazing worship team. Because Psalm 34 says that angels encamp around those who fear and worship the Lord, and he delivers them. You're going to get delivered of pain today, of afflictions and of things that are happening to your body because we've been worshiping, amen? Now, believe it or not, angels also uh, react and interact and are activated into your giving, into your giving. That is throughout the Bible, and people do not realize that it is in the Bible. Just let me give you just a couple examples. Do you remember this, the, the story of Cornelius? 
Cornelius was involved in a world-changing event. Anybody here who is not of Jewish descent is a Gentile. And the way the Gentiles got grafted into the family of God is through this event that happened with Cornelius. He was a great man, a, a, an Italian, uh, and he was a sergeant of the Italian regiment. And what, what happened? He also, though, he acted like a Jewish person. He prayed every day. He gave, gives, he gave gifts to the poor. And an angel appeared one day and told him to go find Peter. And, and he sent men out to find Peter and brought Peter back. And they were all baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. And for the first time ever, the Gentiles were grafted in to the family of God. So that event ended up for everybody in here that's a Gentile being able to be in the family of God. This is a world-changing event. Now, who started it? An angel responded what? This is what he responded to. It says, the angel came to Cornelius, Acts 10, 4, and he says that Cornelius was gazing intently at him and says, what is it, Lord? And the angel said, your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor <laughs> have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him. Believe it or not, every time you give, you can actually activate angels. The angel said, this is why I'm here, because your prayers and what? Your gifts. Not just your gifts, your generous gifts. Man, when you sow, I got my seed right here. I'm, yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm feeling the seed. When you sow, angels start to activate. They start to activate. They start to move. They start to do what angels are sent to do, to bring healing, to bring financial breakthrough, to bring deliverance, to bring protection. Amen? Listen to this story. Judges 13, Manoah has a wife. The Bible doesn't say what her name is. But an angel comes to her and tells her, you're not going to be barren anymore. You're going to have a baby named Samson. And he's going to kick some Philistine butt. So there's Manoah. And he goes, he doesn't even realize this being is an angel. And he says, hey, how about if I prepare a kid for you to eat? And this is what the angel said. Listen. He said, though you detain me, I will not eat of your food. But make ready a burnt offering and offer it to the Lord. For Manoah did not know that he was an angel of the Lord. So Manoah took the kid with a cereal offering. Now listen to this. And offered it upon the rock to the Lord. And the angel working wonders. While Manoah and his wife looked on. So here's Manoah. He prepares an offering. And while he's bringing the offering, the angel was working wonders. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> Look, Steve didn't ask me to take an offering. I'm doing this because there's angels here waiting to do a miracle for you. And one of the biggest ways you can do, one of the biggest things is through your hearkening to the word. They're going to hearken to the word, your worship, and your giving. It was while Manoah brought the offering that the, quote, angel worked a wonder. What was the wonder he worked? Noah's wife got pregnant. She was barren. She was healed in her body. Did you hear what I said? I want you to watch this video. I taught this message not too long ago when I was at a meeting with Patricia King. And I want you to see the extraordinary, oh my God, the extraordinary miracle that Jesus had his angels do while this woman brought her seed to the offering. Don, let's play Barbara Collarbone. Now you uh, you have metal in your neck. Now you uh, you have metal in your neck. Yes. Yes. How long has it been there? Um, about probably eight years now. What, what kind of uh, uh, restrictions and pain and things like that did you have from it? A lot of movement pain. Uh, you know, restriction of movement until I went to the tent event, um, and then I received total movement here, but I still had my collarbone, and I had a, a, a rotator cuff tear. So then last night we prayed again, right? And so you told me that if you look at your, you, you can feel it yourself, each one of us has uh, like the collarbone, right? One side and the other side, and they're supposed to be even. Well, Barb, how much were yours not even? Um, really bad. One was up here, and the other one was here, and this one would stick out, and very painful. Okay. Now, Show them your collarbone. Can anybody, and anybody can come up and examine it to see? Okay, we can, let's have the camera come up. They are dead even. They're not sticking out. One's not higher than the other. Her collarbones are dead even right here. Okay, right there. So, and you brought that to my attention. And so it's very noticeable, yes? 
Yeah, I actually stood in front of the mirror this morning and rejoiced in the Lord. It's, it's very beautiful. And, I, I, you know, it's, it, it's so beautiful that this has happened. And I'm going to say something else too, Katie. Really, this movement here did not start happening until you started talking about the sewing. And the two ladies that are with me, we could literally hear my bones moving and cracking and adjusting <laughs> while you were speaking about that. Now, did you hear that? She said that the movement of those bones being put into place, her whole collarbone moved because it was protruding and it was upward, started when I talked about sewing. I know that people get their hackles up sometimes when preachers start talking about an offering. But you have to understand something. Uh, when, when preachers like Patricia, myself, Brandy, our hearts are pure in this area. And you can say, how can that be? Well, God has, because our souls are healed, we understand the power of sacrificial seed, of sowing, of giving, and it opens up a realm of miraculous and breakthrough in your life. And you just said that when I started talking about sowing, that's when your friends, are your friends here? Come here right now, quickly, quickly, quickly. Tell me your name. Jennifer. Jennifer, you were sitting next to Barb. Yes. Yeah. Could you hear stuff moving? Absolutely. Yeah. What did it sound like? You can literally hear the crickling of her bones moving. Oh, uh, yes. 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 And it, did it happen during the sewing time? Yes. Wow. Now, how about you? What's your name? Catalina Rodriguez. Catalina, you are so precious, darling. <laughs> <clears throat> did you, were you sitting next to Barb during that time? I actually was telling her that um, I was hearing noises and it was like crackling all over, all of her bones were even popping and cracking. Did you hear that? I want you to remember this testimony next time you get your hackles up and they'll go, ah, they're asking for money again. Ah. Do you want your miracle or not? You can't buy a miracle, but man, you can sow into a realm. Okay, now, you also said, you also, stay right, stay right there, you also said that now you have movement in your arm that you couldn't have. You even said that you couldn't, you had to sleep with your arm by your side. And last night you slept with it all the way over here for the first time. Tell, tell us about that. Well, when I walked out of here, I could only carry my purse on this side. When I walked out of here, I was literally carrying my purse with this arm and it was not hurting. And, and just to let you know, for the last seven or eight years, the only way I could sleep was on this side with this arm straight here all the time because of the pain. It would not go over without being painful. I slept all night. Well, I didn't sleep because I kept hearing, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, the, the whole night, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. That's all I heard all night. And I was just, like, going with the flow. And, and my arm. And I just, you guys, I just have so much movement. I couldn't even, like, to lift dishes out of, I can't wait to get home to lift dishes out of my cupboard. <laughs> Seriously. Who would have thought we'd be happy to do that, amen? Everybody, let's give them a big hand, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I had a guy named Mark when I went to Kevin Bosconi's place, and he had a large lump here at the top of his spine and a large lump at the bottom of his spine. He had it for 40 years. Excruciating back pain for 40 years. I preached this message. He sowed a seed. The lumps disappeared, and pain went with it. We're going to open the realm with our giving this morning. Okay, we're going to open a realm, a healing well that has already been in this church. And we're going to reopen it with our giving this morning. And then we're going to move into miracles. And we're going to believe God to do, to take away pain. People are in pain right now in the audience. People have issues. I heard legs and limbs are going to be healed today. Legs and limbs. Thank you, Jesus. Remember the angel, when he came to Cornelius, he said, your prayers and your generous gifts. It's a sacrificial seed that brings a miracle. I know you guys have been giving a lot and you've traveled far and, and everything else, but by great faith, ask the Holy Spirit. I'm not here to, to direct any, any of your giving, but just ask the Holy Spirit and with great faith and obedience, do what he says this morning as you prepare your offering and then put your faith on a miracle it's going to happen for you this morning because that's what we're here for we're here to change your life not just to preach a message 
We're here to bring a power encounter with the Lord so that you can go home healed, pain-free, free in your emotions, free in your mind, empowered. Remember when Manoah, it was as Manoah prepared his offering and brought it to the Lord that the angel worked wonders and healed his wife's body. So right now, prepare your offering. Just bow your head and prepare, and then we're going to start singing. And I, I, I don't know how much chaos it would make if I, brought, if I had people come up and drop it off, or should we just, how much chaos would that create? Are we happy to, or, should, you know, we can pass the buckets too. I understand this is a bigger crowd. It might be too, it might be too lengthy. Should we just pass it? I don't know. I'm going to leave it to, to you guys. we put it up here. I just like to bring, I don't know why. I mean, I just, it's so powerful to bring the offering up. But we'll need to move quickly. And if somebody can't walk up, then have your friends do it for you. So we're going to start singing while you're preparing your offering this morning. And you can make checks out to Elijah's List. Elijah List Ministries. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I know that as people come up, that it's just like Cornelius. The angel came because of their, because of his prayers and his generous gifts to the Lord. And as Manoah prepared the offering and brought it, the angel worked wonders. So I'm releasing angels in this room that will hearken to those scriptures. And they'll perform the same things that we see them doing in the Bible. Deliverance, healing, breakthrough, financial empowerment. The Bible says that Deuteronomy 8.18, God gives power to create wealth. That word power means strength of angels. Angels are being released right now to bring financial miracles. The angel worked wonders when Manoah brought his offering. Angels are being released right now to work a wonder, a wonder in your body, a wonder in your family, a wonder in your business, a wonder in every part of you. Right now, in Jesus' name, a wonder for your children, a wonder for your church and your ministry. Angels being released right now to work wonders in your mind, wonders in your emotions. Wonders in every part of you. Angels being released right now to involve you in a world-changing event like they did Cornelius. Cornelius was involved in a world-changing event. We are here because of that, that thing that happened that day. And the angel came and picked him. He was picked because of his prayers and his generous gifts. Thank you, Jesus. People here are going to be involved in a world-changing event. Who receives that? Say, I want to be involved in a world-changing event. Say, pick me, God. Here's my seed. Pick me, God. Say, here's my seed. Pick me, God. Thank you, Jesus.
says that you will prosper a thousand times more than you already are as he has promised you. Do you receive the thousand fold increase to stay today? If you do, can you start to shout to God? Come on, let's sing some more. Ready? We're going to pray. Don, put that picture, that still picture of that woman up. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every seed being sown and it's activating the angelic realm right now. Angels are being released to work wonders. Angels are being released to do financial miracles. Angels are being released to heal bodies. Angels are being released to bring prosperity to your business, your ministry, your household. Angels are being released to involve you in a world-changing event. And so now I suspend time in the name of Jesus right now. I take authority over time. And I ask that the Holy Spirit would go back to the time people were hurt. The place people are hurt. And the cause that made them hurt. And heal them at the root. In the name of Jesus right now. And I thank you, God. I thank you, God, and I thank you, God, that people are going to be healed right now of all the trauma that's blocking the miracle, all the trauma that's blocking the miracle. Look up on the screen. You see that person, that lady right there on the screen? She shot herself in the chest with a 357 Magnum because she didn't want to go to prison. The doctor saved her, wired her breastbone and her sternum together with metal wire. She could feel it with her hand. She described it as feeling like chicken wire. You can see her hand right there. She had just cut, brought her hand back down from touching her chest after God took the metal out and it completely disappeared. But the first prayer I prayed for her was to be healed of trauma. How many people in here have metal in your body? Please wave your hand at me. Stand up and wave at me if you have metal in your body. Keep on standing if you're able to right now. You've been through trauma. How many people have pain in your body? Wave at me. Wave at me. Oh, oh my God, the whole place. Jesus. So right now, some it could be that some trauma started this pain in your body. So I'm going to speak to your soul, and you're going to just be still and receive it. Amen? And I'm going to command you right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would be healed in your soul of all trauma so that you can prosper and be in health even as your soul is prospered. Right now, I send wave after wave of the Holy Spirit and power. Wave after wave of the Holy Spirit and power to heal you of trauma in your mind, trauma in your emotions, trauma in your body. Any trauma you went through that led to this pain or this disorder or this metal being put into your body right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. And I break pain and break trauma off of you now, in the name of Jesus. I curse trauma at the root now, in the name of Jesus. Say it with me. Say, I curse trauma at the root, in my soul, and in my body.
angels right now. Go and take out metal out of these bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I command all metal to be removed or to dissolve and come out of the body. And I speak a creative miracle into your body to form bone right now, to replace that metal in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, 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 right now. And I command all pain to go. Pain, go. I said pain, go. I said pain, go. Right now. And all movement and motion return to your body now. Restricted movement. I break restricted movement off of your body right now. That you will have full motion, full range of motion. Full range of motion. In the name of Jesus, I decree these things right now. Now, start moving and start testing, please. If you had pain, if you had lack of restricted movement, you had restricted movement, start testing. If you, I don't see you wiggling, you're not testing. I saw a man test one time for 20 minutes before he got a miracle. He had metal in his arm. He could not raise his arm any higher than, than this. And he sat there for 20 minutes in the hallway doing this. And finally, after 20 minutes, he went, and he did what he could not do, what was impossible to do. So you need to test. You need to test as we wait on the Holy Spirit right now. that spirit of infirmity that's on your spine and on your bones. Come out! 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 I loose you in the name of Jesus. I loose you in the name of Jesus. I loose you in the name of Jesus. Come out.
has been returned to you. Wave at me. Now, who is 100% healed? 100%. Wave at me if you're 100%. Please come up here if you are 100%. And let's give a big hand to God as they come up. Let's bring the music way down so we can hear her. Tell us your name, sugar. Christine Bockerman. Christine, what was wrong with you? Well, I didn't even think about it, but you said the back. And I have like a shoehorn on the top. My spine goes like this. It's totally flat. I had my husband feel it. And he gives me massages all the time. And he goes, oh my gosh, it's flat. It's totally flat right here at the top. Because it goes like this. My spine goes like this. And it's flat. If you feel it. Is that supposed to be flat? It, it's not supposed to go like this, like a shoe. Oh, you mean it was pointing out yeah. like this, like a point, like a bone spur. Like a shoehorn. And now, it, and you could actually feel it with your hand before. My husband. 
Come on, husband. Come here, husband. Come here, husband. All the time, so. Your husband gives you massage. Well, that might be over with now, girl. That's the one thing about healing. You don't need all that spoiling anymore. Give him a hand as he comes up. Amen. All right, now, let's bring the music down even further so we can hear him. Tell us your name, sir. My name's Brant Bockerman. Now, this is your lovely wife. Uh, she says she has a shoehorn. Can you explain that to us? Or she had one. <laughs> saddle horn. It's like a saddle horn, so it does it protrude out the back of her neck? If you've ever ridden a horse, that thing that you hold on to with your wrist, <laughs> that thing is what was sticking wow. out of the back of her neck. Because they, she's been told she's had a twisted, weird neck from physicians and everything. They can't even believe her neck's like that. Okay, so now you've given her many massages, is that correct? Yes. And so you have held on, and <laughs> I will not go any further with that comment. But you have felt <laughs> the shoehorn, is that correct? Yes, okay. it's just a big knob back there. I mean, it's... So when she's bad or naughty, can you steer her the way you want her to go with that shoehorn? Not necessarily. Not necessarily, okay. So now, you have massaged the neck, and how big was the knot? Can you kind of show us with your fingers? Can you, can you kind of hold up and show us? It was, it was about this size. When it... Well, so this size. Are you seeing that? That is a big knot. Do you see that? Now, I want about this high out of the skin. So what is that, about three quarters of an inch to an inch? It was probably half inch. A half inch sticking out of skin. Now, I want you to reach up to her neck right now. Now, I want you to feel where it normally is. What does it feel like now? I almost can't believe it. You almost can't believe it. Why? Because it's... If I wasn't, if I wasn't feeling it, I wouldn't believe it. Because she had a... Look at that. I can just run my hand through that smoothly like that. And it's not there. Not there. It's just like a normal back running down. A normal back instead of a naughty back. Praise God. Now, did you have pain from this, dear? Yes, I did. How much pain did you have every day? Probably, if you'd say probably a seven, and I carry this calming cream to put on my neck, and I do it a couple times a day, and it's black, and sometimes it kind of gets real weird, so you can see black on my neck. So it's like, but I carry it around because I, I'm in a lot of pain in my neck, so it hurts, and that's the only thing that really helps. So what's your pain level right now? Zero. <laughs> Come on! Let's give God a big praise tonight! Come on! interview this next lovely lady I want to make a decree there's obviously a healing gift for bone miracles now so I speak to bone spurs I command them to dissolve I command brand new bone to form in their place I speak to the marrow and bones I command it become completely free of disease I speak to breaks and cracks and sprains and twists and tears and bones. And I command them to be repaired. I speak to osteoporosis. And I command it to die. You disease, you die. And bone marrow and bone take its place. Fresh, new, strong, stable bone marrow right now in the name of Jesus take its place I speak to curvature in the spine I command the curve to be perfected I speak to the bone and I command it to move into place if it moves into place don't freak out it's now you're being healed now and I command that spirit of infirmity to come out come out come out come out come out 
curvature of the spine. Be healed now. And I command TMJ right now. TMJ, be healed now. No pain. No pain. No pain in the name of Jesus. When you bite down, there'll be no pain and no clicking. Command repairing in the jaw. I just had a woman 25 and a half years, TMJ. So bad she had to come two days before the meeting, going to a doctor, taking medication, pain medication for her, the pain she felt. She couldn't even bite down and chew food for two days before the meeting. She came to the meeting and within one word, one word, the TMJ from 25 and a half years, completely gone, totally healed, bit down, no pain at all. I had a guy at a meeting. He had a mysterious bone disease, bone disease. He broke his legs twice in one month, twice. They took x-rays, an MRI of him. His bones looked like spider webs. They were so disintegrated. He came in wearing two leg braces and a cane. I have the video. By the end of the night, braces and cane off, doing squats on the stage, completely healed. <laughs> receive your bone miracle. Say, I receive it now. Say, I receive a bone miracle now. And if you're in a wheelchair, get up and walk. Get up and walk. And if you have pain in your knees, test it. Test every part of your body. What's your name, dear? Terry Woods. Terry, you're, you came up to me. Your eyes, you still have, your eyes are filled with tears. And you said 100%. 100%. What, what, what was it, Terry? What did you have? A dead bone in my shoulder. What is a dead bone? Socket is, is uh, the ball is dead. The ball of the socket in your shoulder is dead. How, does the, how did they find out? Did they take an x-ray? How did they find out it was dead? It's MRIs and x-rays. MRIs and x-rays. And I have the surgery date for the 24th of this month. Oh, not anymore, baby. Oh, yeah. Give glory to God. Give glory to Jesus Christ. Give glory to Jesus. Come on, give glory to Jesus. 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 That's right. What kind of complications did you face? Pain from it? Yes. How much was your pain every day? A 10. A 10. So would you have classified it that you were in excruciating pain? Yes. Okay, now, did you also have restriction of movement? I could not move my arm. You could not move your arm at all or slightly or what was it? So you could only do this with your arm. That's it. Is that correct? So you could do this because the elbow joint was okay, but you couldn't lift it from the shoulder. Is that correct? That's right. Let's see you do it now. Come on! Sing it again, come on! Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is just told me something else but you know I just got to say something here real quick if God can heal a dead bone dead dead do you think he can heal your bones he brought that bone back to life amen okay now you also said you have metal in your neck what happened there I, have, I fell and I have a fusion in my neck out of four inch um, piece of metal four inch piece of metal in your neck While I was praying I felt heat on my neck. I don't think it's there anymore. I don't know for sure, but I don't think it's there. There was heat, and I didn't have any mobility. Now I can. <laughs> so, how much pain did you have in your neck normally? Uh, it was always a five, at least a five. It was always a five. What is it now? I don't have any pain. Now, do, do the turning thing again. Show us how that worked. Yeah. So, you're telling me you couldn't do that before? 
What? Let's see. Now, can you fiddle the metal with your fingers? Well, let's find out. Okay, bring the metal. Now, did she already have a miracle? All right, so here's the deal. The metal either gets taken out and replaced by bone, or it stays in, okay, and it changes form. It actually changes, like, it becomes, it acts like bone, right? Or it just stays in completely, but you have full movement and you have no pain. But any one of those, do you think she would have a miracle? All right, so now, let's test it. All right, so this is the Garrett model. It's the same model as you saw the police using when, in those videos, and you heard the sergeants testifying that, that it goes through skin. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, take your necklace off and take off your glasses. I probably will have to ask you to take off your earrings too. Now, it, see the green light? That means it's on, because people will go, oh, she turns it off right before she puts it on their neck. Oh, come on. If I did that, I don't think God would let me stand up here. <laughs> Amen. So, look here. Okay, so it's picking up that. This, I wonder if somebody else has metal in their body. We could test on them. Yeah, let's see. Look. Where is it? Where, where's your metal at? Yeah, come, come up. Come, 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 come. All right. Yeah, oh, you did too soon. Where, well, we'll let her come, come. She's, she came up. Okay. Come, give her a hand, eh? Why don't we actually give her a hand? Yeah. There we go. Now, hopefully you haven't had a miracle yet. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Come over here. What side is it, baby? Right here? Okay. See that? Still there. Well, we'll pray for you. All right, now let's, let's test Terry now. Okay, so uh, Heidi, come up here and lift her hair up. Turn sideways, sideways, dear. Okay. Jesus. Oh, she's got her hair. Okay, we got Thank it. Ready? You, All right, let's find out. You ready? of these, but I never, I love Jesus more and more every time. Tell us your name, baby. My name is Janie Morris. Janie, your eyes are filled with tears. The power of God is on you. What's happened to you? What, what, what was wrong with your body? I had a, two things. First of all, I'm a praise and worship dancer in case you can't tell. I love the Lord so much. We saw that, dear. And I had my shoulder was hurting where I couldn't lift my arm up. This arm could only go so far. And it's going up. I think that the pain was coming from my back and I couldn't even like pull my shirt or anything up because the arm was hurting so bad, my shoulder. So it, it, How does that feel? How's the pain? Oh my, no pain. No pain. No pain. Thank you, Jesus. Second thing is, I've been fighting ovarian cancer for two years. I had stage three ovarian cancer about a year ago. And I was in remission for eight months. And it came back again in May. And I was, I had three new tumors that started growing, two near my liver and one near my spleen. And I had six months of very aggressive chemo. And so I finished that chemo in November, and I had a CAT scan December the 5th. The CAT scan came back with two 
tumors that completely disappeared, but one of them near my liver, the doctor said, it's, it's got smaller. We don't know if it's live cancer or tissue, tissue, scar tissue. And when you prayed about the tissue, I said, Lord, that is tissue. I am healed by the blood of Jesus. Today I am healed. Do you receive it? God sent his word and he healed them, amen. Thank you, God. I need a catcher, please. Quickly. I want to quickly say that on Tuesday, this Tuesday, the doctor wanted me to get through Christmas and get through this weekend. And Tuesday, when I go back to Houston, Texas, that's where I'm from, he's going to meet with all the panel of doctors because they're, they're meeting so they I have four options of what the next treatment is. But there's not going to be any more treatment. Come on. Her tissue is healed. Amen. Her tissue is healed. Amen. Her tissue is healed. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Now we'll just leave her right there so she can worship the Lord. Come over here, sugar bean. Who is 80% or more healed? Stand up. 80%. Stand up. 80%. If you're 80%, please come up here in the front and line up right here. So, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I pray that the angel would come and, it would, and that he would take out that hip and he put in brand new bone right now in the name of Jesus. I speak a creative miracle into your body and I command right now that you would be strengthened with new hip and strengthened in every area of your body right now in the name of Jesus right now and that you would have no no pain your ligaments would completely connect and you would be have freedom of movement and motion right now in the name of Jesus now do you, do you normally have pain what's your pain level right now uh, I also have MS which is why father we command that disease to die we speak to that disease and we command it to die right now in Jesus name right now right now in the name of Jesus right now right now in Jesus name right now right now right now I command that foul spirit to come out 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 give God a big praise amen Okay, now these are my 80% people. Are these my 80% people? Are any of you 100%? Are any of you 100%? Any of you, yes? If you're 100%, come up here. 80%, if you're 100%, come up here. Now, you guys don't pray. You only receive. Men, don't, and women, that includes praying in your mind. <laughs> you know how us women are. Oh, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Do not pray, receive. You cannot receive while you're transmitting. All right? Now, everyone stretch your hand out towards them. So now, Father, we stretch forth our hand. These people are 80%. We know they already, that you are already healing them. And now we ask for the more. We bless what you're doing, God, as we stretch forth our hand. And we ask for the more. More ministry of the Holy Spirit. More ministry of the angelic realm. More ministry of power and anointing. More movement. We go to the root, pull it out in the name of Jesus. We ask for more movement. Less restriction all the way to 100%. We ask for 100% freedom of pain. Right now in Jesus' name. 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 Right in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you Make a 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you place where that devil's trying to hang on and I say you are healed you are excellent soul you are filled with dunamis power right now and that stubborn spirit you have to come out now come out come out come out of the body come out of the spine come out of the bones come out of the legs come out of the knees come out of the arms come out of the back come out of the neck come out come out come out Come out of the organs right now. Come out, come out, come out. Come out of the organs right now. Come out, come out, come out. In Jesus' name right now. Yeah. Now, I command that pain to go to zero now in Jesus' name. Right now. Now, start to test. Start to test while I ask this lady. What's your name, dear? Sue Nevin. Sue, what happened? Uh, four months ago, I fell down hard on my right knee, and it's... I didn't go to the doctor. Um, I'm a nurse, so I didn't want to go to the doctor. <laughs> and uh, yeah, who would know better than a nurse whether or not you should go, huh? Okay, so you didn't want to go, and then when I, so you just suffered through it. What'd you have? Uh, yeah, it just was hurting all the time, especially at night. I could I could feel it. I had to change my position lying down, and, um, and, and it I it was I was always aware of it. I it didn't impede me from walking or anything like that, but. It, it wasn't like it was before, and as we were praying here, um, the pain just gradually just started going, and now it's 100% gone. 100%. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Now, who else? Now, who else here is now 100%? 100%. I'm going to sit here and wait for you to come up. As soon as you're at 100%, you're going to come up here. Keep testing. You're 100%. Come up here. What's your name? Sharon Swanson. Sharon, what happened? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say I wouldn't have come here if I had known this was what this was about. <laughs> I got you now. You can't go nowhere. <laughs> so my mom said we're going to a conference, and I thought Graham Cook was going to be here. <laughs> and Katie Susan, I'm sorry. Sorry. I didn't know anything about you. So uh, during worship, um, the Lord told me uh, to put my hand on my, my neck and that signs and wonders would follow. And um, I have rheumatoid arthritis caused by autoimmune inflammation. Well, how long have you had that, dear? A long, long, long time. I, I had a neck injury as a nine-year-old. 
nine years old. So you've had it 10 years. I'm 54. You don't look it, dear. So I, I was standing there. It's like, okay, I received that healing. But I'm kind of sore from CrossFit yesterday. And so I, it's like, I can't tell. Well, is, that, is it all gone or is that sore from CrossFit? And the Lord just said, go up and, and declare my healing. How does your neck feel right now? It feels different. Your neck feels different. Can you do any more movement than you used to not be able to do? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what would that mean to you that she is healed? Woo. Come on. Now, are you scared? Were you scared as I was starting to preach? Well, I was like, oh, yeah, is this for real? I mean, I know God heals, but I don't know. Now, how do you feel now? Oh, yeah, signs and wonders. Come on, let's give God a big praise, amen. Are you a believer now? You are, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, who else is 100%? Come up here right now. You're 100%. Come on. Come on up. And the rest of you thinking, oh, well, it hasn't moved yet. Oh, it's moving as we overcome by the blood and the testimony, amen. Tell us your name. Uh, Donna. Donna, what happened? I broke my ankle in three places. Broke your ankle in three places, not just one, but three. How did you do that, Donna? <laughs> you don't want to know. Oh, uh, yeah, now we really want to know. I was delivering mail, and I, some the way the steps came down, they were only like that far. So in your mind, when you get ahead of it, I was expecting to go down further than I did, and my ankle went that way, my leg went that way. Oh, ow. So I bet that hurt really bad. So I had two pins. You had metal pins in your ankle. A plate or a uh, let's see, two pins, uh, I don't know what you call it, a nail, I guess, and a plate with ten screws on this side. Can you feel it with your hand? Yes. Take your shoe off. Shut that up. <laughs> you want to sit down into it? Can we have a chair, please? Can we have a chair, please? No, no, wait, hold on. Here, we'll do this right here. Gentlemen, can we get this right here for her? Reach down and touch that foot. Tell me if you can still feel the metal. Um, I can't feel the plate on this side. I'm okay, could you, could you used to feel the plate in your foot? Yes. Touch it again. It's, it's gone. There's no plate there. Couldn't do this. Okay, so now you just said I couldn't do this. So what is this? I couldn't turn my foot this way because that's the way it fell. And the plate was there, so it kept it straight. So the plate actually disabled you because of the stiffness of the metal from moving your foot. I don't know if y'all can see this. Can we zoom in on the camera online? Oh, or maybe they can't see it. Okay, go ahead now, move it. You couldn't do that. I couldn't do that at all. You're actually now able to swing your foot back and forth, and you couldn't do that because of the, the plate in your foot. Right. The pin, the pin that's here, I couldn't bring my foot all the way up, and I could feel the pin. Okay, so when you used to bring your foot up like this, you said you could feel the pin, what, grinding or sticking in your foot? Yeah, just like it was poking into the foot. Okay, now, when you do that now, what do you feel? <laughs> my whole ankle feels normal. <laughs> all right. Ready? The green light is on. Okay. You ready? Thank Here we go. Jesus. Oh. Can't leg all the way up. Right, it might be the chair. Um, somebody holds her leg up for a... No, there might be metal on the floor. Okay. Ah, there we go. All right. Are we ready? All right, so she already had a miracle. Okay, she can't feel the plate. To me, that means one of two things. It's either gone or it's shrunk so much in size that she can't feel it anymore. There might be residual left of it. Normally what happens if that happens is by the next day it's completely gone. So I always ask people to come back and see me the next day so I can test them again. I had a guy, we'll watch his video later on this afternoon, named Kwando. He got into a karate accident. He karate chopped somebody. And uh, he had a metal bar put in his hand. Well, 
as we were praying, he could move his thumb like he could, like crazy, couldn't do that before, and he could feel the metal getting smaller and smaller. When we tested him, he still had a little bit of metal in him, but the next day it was completely gone. So now, let's see what happens. Ready? Can you put your foot up on my knee? Ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, you still got something right there. What is that? Can you touch that and tell me what's there? Do you know what's there? One of the pins are. One of, where one of the pins are. So you can't feel the plate, but there is some screw in, still in the foot. Now, has she gotten a miracle already? Do you believe the metal is getting smaller? If she can't feel it, how long have you been able to feel it? Um, well, it's been a year. And you have definitely, you can feel the outline of the metal? Yeah, uh, uh, whole outline. There's eight, there were eight screws. You can feel the whole outline of that metal? Yes. And now you can't feel any of the outline? feel any of it. Do you think it's definitely getting smaller? Yeah. Let's give God a big praise. Yeah. All right, now, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to complete what you started. We know sometimes this takes a minute. We thank you. If she can't feel it, that means it is getting smaller. It's a fact. And we know you're going to complete it and completely remove every bit of it. And we believe that when she comes to find me tomorrow, it's going to be gone, even tonight. So we thank you, Lord. We bless what you're doing. And we ask that you continue to dissolve it and replace it with bone in the name of Jesus. Now let's give God a big praise. Okay, now. You know, we actually need to give God a bigger praise because if she could feel the whole outline of that metal plate and now she can't feel any of it, God is doing a miracle. 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 Oh boy. I just looked at the clock and it's 1208. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So now, anybody else is 100%. 100%. Come up here quickly. If you're now 100%. 100%. Now, 100%. Now, are the rest of you still at 80 or have you had any more improvement? Okay. Yeah. Do you think people that are 80% healed are having a miracle? Just shout out some of the things right now. What's your 80%? You had a back problem? Two titanium rods. And two screws holding your back. What level of pain were you at? Yeah, you were at normally at a 10. What are you at now? A 1 or a 2. I bless that. You're going to come find me tonight. We're going to come test you. And you're going to be completely healed. Who else has something notable happening? Raise your hand. And talk to me. Raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. You. You've been in love. I had a partial knee replacement, both hip replacements, and I've had an issue with my back. So you have partial knee, both hips, issue with back. And I didn't want to have back surgery. Didn't want to have back surgery. And what level of pain were you at normally? Oh, 12. And what are you at now? Maybe a 2. From a 12 to a 2. I have not been able to stand up for more than 30 seconds. You have not been able to stand up for 30 seconds. Well, you've been standing in line for about 30 minutes. Can we give God a praise? Yes. Over here. Over here. Quickly, because we're running out of time. Something notable. Something notable. Yes, sir. I had a titanium barrels in my spine, but I also have a stimulator, and I have a battery that's in my left side, and it's like shrunk three quarters. So the actual battery has gotten smaller by three quarters of the side. Yes. And you can tell that by touching it. Father, finish the work. You've done a three quarter. You've taken about well, three quarters of that battery. It's almost all the way gone. Just like that bullet dissolved and got smaller and smaller until it completely dissolved. You're going to do that for this man. I thank you, God, that you're working a miracle now. And by the end of the night, it's going to be complete in Jesus' name. Did you have pain, sir? Yes. What level of pain did you have? Ten. And what's it now? Probably a three. Let's give God a praise. Okay, we got to move quick. We got to move quick. Tell us your name. James Autry. What was wrong with you? I was praying for a friend of mine who's got metal in her, and, and I stood up. 
And as I lifted my hands, I was like pins and needles in my neck because I had torticollis. I was in a prayer meeting at my church about a month ago. And that, that Sunday morning, I just got hit. Like, and then I couldn't. Torticollis is a wry neck. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, just, I'm lifting my hands up in worship. And I said, Father, this really hurts. And this warm blanket came on my neck. And the, all the pain went away. What was your pain Hallelujah. normally? Uh, normally, again, I, I can move, but when I lifted my hands, it was like needles in the back of my neck. So what's it now? None. Let's give God a praise. What's your name? Katie Huff from Montana. Ooh, girl, all right. Katie, yeah. Well, okay, tell us what's the problem. I've had myofascia pain from work comp injury from 2003 until today. 15 years. What level was your pain every day? It was, it was constant. It was anywhere from a five to a nine. Um, Chronic and constant. Yeah, from my head to my butt. And like last night when I sat in the chair, I had such sciatica pain in the back of my leg. What's your pain now, girl? The sciatica pain is gone. I went to the doctor before I came here regarding my shoulder. I couldn't lift it. I had a big knot. It's gone. Is the knot gone? It's gone. And let's see you lift it now. Come yeah. on, give God a praise. Come on. Come on. Tell us. Tell me your name. Christina. Christina, what'd you have? I've got herniated disc and I have to have surgery on you had her, You had had herniated disc and you were going to have surgery. What kind of pain did it give you? 18 years old. 18 years of pain. What level pain every day? Eight. An eight pain for 18 years. And you're scheduled to have surgery. What's your pain level now? She said, I don't have any pain. I take it that means a zero. A zero. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. Tell me your name. Mary Ann. What was the, what was the problem? Um, I have had, I've been in maybe 10 auto, auto accidents. 10 car accidents. Girl, I break calamity off of you and the people that are driving you around. In Jesus' name. All right, so... Yeah, the first one was at 16. We rolled a car. Anyway, I have a reverse. I had a reverse curve. Reverse curve of my neck, and I had uh, started off with migraines. They've been. I don't have migraines like that anymore, but it's constant. You know, there's just always this pressure on my neck. So always a pressure and pain too, or just pressure? Uh, sometimes pain. What was your level of pain sometimes? Oh, you know, it could get up to six, seven. You know, when a headache came, you know, it would be. What's the pressure like right now? nothing. Zero pressure. After how long? Oh, I don't know. How many years is that? 16, 65. Five years. I don't know. <laughs> is there a doctor in the house or a nurse? Anyone? Doctor or nurse in the house? Doctor or nurse in the house? Doctor or nurse in the house? Please come up here and check her neck if you're here. Yes, the nurse. Yes. Stand here to the side. Let her check your neck. Okay. Come up here. Sir, what was your name? Lush Moore. What happened? A whole bunch of things. <laughs> I got titanium in both shoulders but I stood up, but when I was standing there, uh, I felt my neck just started heating up. Well, I, I broke my neck twice. Last time was last year, and uh, it, it put bone slivers in the back of my neck, and that messes up your ability to see and your, your ability to hear, and so I had to plug my ears when the music is up because I can only hear with one ear at a time. And uh, I felt that heat, and, and the, the pain went away. The, the heat's still there. And uh, so I, I don't know about it, all the rest, but it's healed. it's healed. Come on. Let's give God a big praise. I want to talk to you later. I want to talk to all of you later. You need to come. One more person. Tell us really quickly. It's We've got one minute. I took my hearing aids off, and I can hear a lot better. I had a knot because I have scoliosis. It is gone. I still have pain down in here a little bit, but not like I did before. My esophagus does not work. I have 16 different things that are wrong with me. I was prophesied it over 10 years ago, so I am claiming my total healing now. You're on your way, girl. So that knot in your neck is gone. You can feel it gone with your... Yes, my friend can tell you that she had her hand on my neck and it left. So where are you, friend? Do you testify the knot on her neck is gone? Yes, that's correct. It is. So you have the before and after. So if God is, can move and remove a knot, do you think he can fix your spine and your neck? If you're still not healed, I release that right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. 
I command the bone miracles to complete, to complete, to complete. And anybody that gets a miracle, I want you to come up and find me tonight. Amen. Father, we have to go now. We thank you. I, I ask, Lord, that you complete. Is anybody else in line? More than 80% now. Raise your hand. Anybody else in the line? You are, ma'am? Okay, I won't be able to interview you, but yes. Father, I thank you. You're going to complete, and you're going to complete for everybody in the audience. We thank you, Lord. You're doing a great work, and you're going to continue to do it for the rest of the weekend, and we receive your goodness and mercy in Jesus' name, and everybody shout to God right now. Shout.